S&P 4133 is look it looks like that's where we're settling right now. The technicals we have this 4200 level that everybody's been focusing on and whether we can bump against that and even break through it. But fundamentals, we have earnings and ahead of next week where it's going to be just a flood of, of those results. How are you looking at the market here right now? I really think what's keeping the market up is, yeah, the Fed will raise rates in a couple of weeks, but I think the market just assumes that's it. And they're trying, they don't want to miss the, the Fed is done trade. But I think they're, they're ignoring that historically it's not always a good time to be buying when the Fed's done. Usually the markets, at least in a bear market, the bear markets pre-COVID, they didn't bottom until the Fed was almost done cutting interest rates. Hmm. So I think that over the next couple of weeks when we see tech, because we know tech still dominates the S&P, that that will be sort of a wake-up call that even those names are not immune. Because when you look at, look at their customer base, small, medium-sized businesses, or even large businesses. Everyone is calling a timeout on IT spending. And I think one of the most relevant conference calls this week and earnings reports was from CDW, who specifically highlighted and actually said that they expect IT spending this year to be down high single digits. It was one of the worst performers in the S&P for the week, to your point. Victoria, I'm looking at your notes. You took a SpaceX reference uh, to some things up here. Rapid, unscheduled disassembly. What do you mean? Well, it was a little bit earlier in the day when the markets were selling off a little bit harder. But look, we finally had a week in the red after four weeks of rallies. And I do think you are hitting that wall, not only in the technical level, but next week is make or break. You've got 222 members of the S&P 500 reporting all the mega caps and all your blue chips. But there have been some signs that maybe we won't have a SpaceX moment because you saw like Procter Gamble was the first major staples that came out and they had very solid earnings and they also said the consumer was super strong. We're going to see if that gets reaffirmed as we get Coke and Pepsi and McDonald's and other consumer focused stocks next week. How healthy is consumer spending? Uh, because this week was about how healthy financials were. I feel like next week is how healthy businesses and consumers are going to be. And I am a little concerned that we are going to be teetering out because we haven't seen any of the mega caps really been able to, to move it. If you look, Netflix wasn't bad, but obviously they had a bad reaction to the subscriber number. And then Tesla did miss the mark a little bit. Uh, and if you look at what's driven this market, the lack of breath that we've had and that, that that Meta and Tesla and NVIDIA have really, really pulled this market up, it could pull it back down pretty quickly. But, but what if not? Peter, in a way, things would be clearer. The picture would be clearer for investors if these results were worse, right? From the regional banks, uh, Amex and P&G, both had some really good reports. There's not a lot of pain in there. P&G was able to raise prices. Amex's, you know, rich customers are, are still spending. How clear is it that one more rate hike is going to do the trick and that the Fed is actually getting enough of a restriction in credit to slow the market down um, like the chair said he thought was happening? It's not clear. Uh, and especially if you try to estimate what's the impact of the post-SVB world that we're in. You know, Austin Goolsby tried, uh, estimated that. He thinks that the credit slowdown is the equivalent of 25 to 75 basis points of rate increases. Mm -hmm. So let's just say it's to the upper end of that. You throw in another 25 from the Fed. Can the economy handle another 100 basis points of rate increases? I think we have, we have to understand that this takes time when I say t with this, I mean the, the, the bank impact of SVB, it takes time to filter into the economy. Loan officers don't act that quickly. It, they're now every day evaluating new loans, and I think in much different, tighter standards. Now, standards were, tight, uh, were tightening even before this, but you can be sure they're tightening even more. And all you had to do is read the beige book and see out of all the districts outside of maybe one or two, there's, there's credit drying up everywhere. But it's not just the supply of credit. It's also the demand for it, too. So everyone expects, like, this immediate reaction to the economy on a, on a jolt of that, but it takes time to filter through, and I think that's still ahead.